Today's project is a one piece inset lid jar. This technique is my favorite and I call it one piece. While some pots are made using several pieces, like a jar with a body and a lid, I'll show you how to make a both the body and lid from just one piece of clay. So I call it one piece. Let's begin. I use 700 grams of stoneware back clay on a small throwing bat. This bat, made of 6 mm MDF, is secured to the wheel using a thin layer of clay. To start, I'll shape the clay into a cone, ensuring even density and centered. Using both hands, I'll squeeze the bottom of the clay and shift the edge of my palms upwards. Now I'll use the edge of my right palm to push the pinnacle from the 5 o'clock position to the 10 o'clock position, while my left hand helps maintain the clay's shape. Once the clay is ready, I'll flatten the top and decide the size of the pot. Creating a center hole with my right thumb supported by my left fingers. I'll leave about 5 mm of thickness at the bottom and slide my right hand's fingertips along the bottom towards myself while my left hand holds the base steady. A wooden rib is used to compress the bottom and set the internal size at 8 cm rib plus 3 cm. Now the base is complete, it's time to stretch the wall of the pot. I use my right ring finger to press against the bottom of the wall while my left middle finger applies pressure from the opposite side. Repeating this process creates a thinner and taller clay wall. I'm going to stretch the wall with this handmade tool. It will also compress the bottom and internal corner. I place the edge of the tool at the bottom corner. My right arm is pressed against my body and keep it steady. My left hand is placed upside down and the index finger is pressing the wall against the tool, then slowly lift the clay up. In the beginning, this action is slightly tricky because my left index finger's middle part is not as sensitive as my fingertip. So it is difficult to feel the wall thickness. So I try to see the pressed point vertically directly from the top to control finger pressure. The wall thickness reached 3 mm, then I stopped stretching. Mark the middle of the cylinder and divide the upper part into three sections. I'll fold the top of the cylinder to make 
the lead part of the wall thicker, being careful not to trap the air. My right fingers will support the edge to be folded last. Then I'll bring the top in to make a straight cylinder. I'll smooth the joint part without stretching the wall. Mark a line slightly above the joint and then I'll start to close the top from there. To prevent the shoulder from becoming too wide, I'll start to squeeze below the shoulder. When I squeeze the clay, the inside of the wall starts to buckle, so I don't need to smooth it. Before I close the top completely, I'll reshape the side wall, creating a clear shoulder that helps form a nice dome on top. Now it's time to close the top. I already removed any excess water using a sponge with a long stick. Once my hands reach the top, I keep my left hand in position to hold it steady while my right middle finger pushes the clay to close the top. Now the top is closed. Once the pot becomes the closed form, the air inside holds the pot, so I can easily manipulate the shape. I'm using my left hand which is very wet to create a slippery surface and then I slowly push the needle. I clean the bottom of the pot and trim it. This helps in achieving a clean circular shape which is essential for later step like trimming. I use a fishing strings to separate the pot from the butt later. Before drying the pot, I made small vent holes with a needle to release any trapped air inside the pot, preventing it from cracking. I didn't record that action, but it's very important. First, I'll attach the pot to the wheel using water and skimmed clay for extra stability. Using a loop tool, I quickly reduce the thickness of the wall, ensuring an even surface. The plastic card is a good tool to trim the dome. This is a jar with the read on the rim style. To make this style, please refer to my other video, One Piece Reded Jar. I also posted a double decker version. I'm making a jar with an inset lid today. Time to separate the lid from the body. I use the thin needle and point at the corner 
45 degree angle. My right arm is heavily anchored on the splash pan and my left hand is holding my right wrist to give extra stability. My right ring finger is gently touching the pot to keep the needle position. My right middle finger is controlling the pressure to the needle. The wheel speed is slow. I slow down the speed again at this point as my fingers feel the clay resistance is getting less, meaning the lid will be separated soon. The lid thickness is very good as I made it in double. The pot edge thickness is also very comfortable. I have plenty of clay to make a gallery for the lid. I clean the cutting edge with a needle. Make a round edge so it will take glaze well. I will make a gallery for the lid using a small wooden tool. It can be a other trimming tool for this job. I found wooden tool is good for this as it has a softer edge. Slowly push the tool down at the rim with a 45 degree angle until the gallery start to appear. I will separate the pot from the wheel. I clean the edge first before sliding the metal kidney between the pot and the wheel. Next trimming is a lid. I use the chuck for this. Wet the bottom of the greenware chuck and set it at the center of the wheel. The lid has good thickness to trim. Without making the double thickness at the cylinder stage, the lid will be much thinner and fragile. This gauge is very useful to measure the lid and the pot in one go. I measure the internal diameter with one side then the other side is the exact size of the lid diameter. They fit quite nicely. I trim the concealed footring of the pot. After the centering, secure the pot with three pieces of soft clay. Press the clay to the wheel first, then gently attach it to the pot. I create a small center hole to rest my finger for stability and then trim the circles. The reason I trim the circles first is to avoid creating waves in the trimming surface. Trimming a wide surface with a flat wire tool often causes the wire to catch the clay, resulting in a wavy surface. By trimming circles first, I can minimize this issue. It can be a flat polished bottom as the pot is not for Hot liquid. I prefer less contact surface, so I've chosen the concealed style. After trimming, I polish the bottom using a plastic kidney. This step not only adds a finishing touch, but also helps prevent the occurrence of S cracks, which can be common in pottery. 
At this point, one piece is complete. The inset lid gives traditional warm feeling to the pot. I hope you enjoyed watching this pottery process. Closed form technique offer endless possibilities for creativity, and this method can be a lot of fun to experiment with. Thank you for joining me today, and I'll see you in the next pottery video. Happy creating! Thank you.